welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's a bit of an experiment because I want to see if I can successfully run a Linux distro on an x86 tablet. Specifically, we're going to be trying out various options on this old Surface 2 Pro. And by running a Linux distro successfully on hardware like this, what I mean is not just getting things like the touchscreen and Wi-Fi and audio working, those obviously have to work, I also want to have a good on-screen keyboard experience. So as here in Windows 10 I can flick up an on-screen keyboard in Linux, flick it up and down as required, and have access not just to the letter keys and the number keys, but also cursor arrows and a control key and a tab key, things like that. Now, as I shoot this introduction, I'm not certain this is possible, but I'm going to give it a try. I would like to be running Linux on this tablet. So let's go and get started. Right, when it comes to running Linux on a tablet, there are two possible options. One is to install a mainstream distro and to tweak it for tablet operation. Meanwhile, the second option is to install a dedicated mobile device distro, and so I thought we'd start with that. Already, there are quite a few projects dedicated to running Linux on a mobile device, and the first one I came across is Ubuntu Touch. This is based on a graphical desktop called Unity 8, which for several years was developed and maintained by Canonical, the publishers of Ubuntu. But development at Canonical ceased, and the project now resides with a UB port, as we can see here. And if we click on Ubuntu Touch and uh, get Ubuntu Touch, unfortunately for me, it only currently supports ARM devices. So I can't run it on my x86 tablet. I need to move on. The second thing I came across was uh, this Postmarket OS. As we can see, a real Linux distribution for phones and other mobile devices. Although again, sadly for me, this only supports ARM devices at the moment, so again, I need to move on. Thirdly, I came across this, Plasma Mobile, which is a version of the KDE desktop for, guess what, mobile devices. And if we click on Install here, we can see again it starts off with ARM, there's a lot of ARM stuff here, but if we go right to the bottom, we do find this neon-based AMD64 ISO image, and although this has got a warning to say it's not actively maintained, this should work on my tablet. It says here it can be tested on non-Android Intel tablets, PCs, and virtual machines. So I am going to be taking this for a spin. And finally, I've also come across Ying OS, future mobile OS based on Linux. And if we scroll down here, we discover there are x86 and ARM versions although the x86 version is currently in version 0.9, so we shouldn't expect too much. But regardless, I want to try it out. And if we click on the download link, we get to a page all about the operating system. And there's a download link actually here. And I should just point out, when you click on this, it does request, if we just to scroll down a bit, that you enter an email address to get access to a download of the ISO. I did this a few months ago. I've had no issues, but I just thought I should point that out. So, Let's now test out Plasma Mobile and then Ying OS. Greetings. I've now got the Linux distribution with the Plasma Mobile desktop on it on this SSD as a, a live image. So I can boot this now on the Surface 2 Pro. To do that, I have to hold in the volume key over here and then press the uh, power button to boot from USB and hopefully this will work. Oh, there it is, look. If you're wondering why it's a bright red, it's because Secure Boot is turned off. And uh, here it's got to select operating system. I have got a keyboard connected to the tablet right now because if I don't, I can't press the button to select that. Obviously, if this was installed, you wouldn't have to do that. You wouldn't have the problem. But uh, there we are. It's now booting into the operating system, which, as we can see, is a version of Ubuntu 20.04 with the Plasma Mobile KDE desktop. And here we are arriving in the system, and if I just uh, flick things up, we can uh, enter using a pin. You can see we've got an on-screen keyboard. One, two, three, four, I think is the default, and uh, enter. All good so far. But uh, now we're here, I've found that there are some problems with this. We can get to um, applications. Come on, there we are. It shows us what's 
on the system and flick them down uh, like that. So it, it does work. We've got a working touch screen here, but I can't get the on-screen keyboard to work. If I flick in the search, I can get to a little box, come on, and I can't bring up a keyboard. And if we look in the, uh, the settings, there are various settings here. There's a system settings. And if here we go to uh, input devices and we look at keyboards, the keyboard selections here are clearly all physical keyboards. There is a virtual keyboard option, which if it comes up there, we are says no virtual keyboard, which is obviously not very handy. Things are working, but I said, come on, if I can get in the right place. Tricky to use on this screen, but uh, come on, let me out of it. There we are. And if we go back into settings and we go to some more system settings over here, we can also find virtual keyboard down here, but nothing to help us get things working. So this was a long shot. It's not a supported distribution as it made clear on the, on the website, but I thought we'd give it a go, but uh, it's not gonna work for me. So we'll move straight on to try Ying OS. So here we now are running Ying OS, which uh, is rather professional in terms of what it looks like, as you can see. The touch screen does work. We can pull down things to look at uh, various features here. We can go into uh, settings as we could previously, and uh, that seems to work. And there's various gestures in play. If I uh, pull in from the edge of a screen like that, it'll close things down, as you can see. But uh, once again, I've got problems with having access to an on-screen keyboard. If I go into the, uh, the Chromium web browser like uh, that, which uh, comes up and there is no way to bring up a virtual keyboard. And again, I've gone round and round and round. I can't find a way to do it. So I can close things down nice and easily like, uh, go on, like that. Other side, there we are, that works. But clearly, without a keyboard, I've got a problem. So this is, as I said earlier, in version 0 0.9 on x86 hardware. So this is very much something with potential for the future. So now I'm going to move on to trying out some mainstream Linux distros and tweaking them for tablet use. Greetings. I've now been trying out Ubuntu and Manjaro because they've both got good reputations for tablet use. And here, as you can see, we've got Ubuntu. And as you can see, if I move my finger on the screen, drawing out a rectangle, clearly the touchscreen works without any problems. And I've also gone into settings and turned on the on-screen keyboard in accessibility here. This is the stock on-screen keyboard. We're running again from a live uh, drive, a live SSD. So this is, nothing's been installed here. This is exactly what you get out of the box, as it were. But uh, it does work. If we go to, uh, for example, LibreOffice Writer, you'll see a keyboard comes up. It's not a brilliant keyboard. I can't get it scaled bigger. And we've not got much actually on it, but it does work. So for example, if I hold down the key and uh, type some W's, they will come up on the screen. But the reason I want to show you lots of W's is you can see what happens is typing goes beneath the keyboard. That's not very effective for, for, for good tablet use, but it does work. And uh, the other thing I want to show you, having said that the uh, touchscreen works fine, if I bring up a window, for example, the file manager here showing the SSD from Windows, which is still installed on this tablet. If I try and move this window about, I, uh, I struggle. It doesn't work properly. Uh, there is a stylus you can use with Windows on this tablet, and that works absolutely fine. But if you try and use a finger, at best, oh, it's working a little bit better now, but it's a bit random whether that will work or not. So clearly, this is not ideal. So a bit surprised stylus works, finger doesn't. But uh, anyway, that's a bit of an issue. So let's move on to try out Manjaro. And by the magic of filmmaking, here we are running Manjaro with a GNOME desktop. And yes, it's pronounced GNOME when you're referring to a desktop environment rather than the creatures some people keep in their gardens. And GNOME is potentially at least a good desktop environment to use on a tablet because it's very much based around things like the dock, very icon focused rather than menu item focused compared to other distros. Although, as you can see here, things don't necessarily scale terribly well. Anyway, here in Manjaro, I have turned on again the stock on-screen keyboard. You can install other on-screen keyboards in Linux distros. We'll be looking at those very shortly, but I'm using a stock one here. And again, as we saw in Ubuntu, if we open up a document, I can't open up LibreOffice Writer here because it's not installed by default in Manjaro. But if I click here to type, you can see that as we saw in Ubuntu, we get exactly the same on-screen keyboard. Not a brilliant one, but it does work. But here, if I use 
key just to keep going downwards, you'll see things do scroll rather than going beneath the keyboard space. So that is better performance than we saw in Ubuntu, at least with this particular on-screen keyboard. So uh, let's just close that down, because I also want to show you, close without saving, yes. If I open up a window, for example, the file manager again, here I can move it around perfectly well with my finger, and I can also use the stylus if I want as well. This clearly has got better touchscreen support, at least for the Surface 2 Pro, than we saw in Ubuntu. And indeed, I therefore thought what I should do now is to take Manjaro to tweak it, to add a better on-screen keyboard if I can, and use it on this tablet. But I suddenly thought, wait a second, I've got hanging around this, which is a USB drive with Linux Mint on it. And so before I commit to Manjaro on this tablet, I think we should at least boot up Linux Mint. Well, I'm now very pleasantly surprised because here we are running Linux Mint from the USB drive. So again, we're running a live image. Nothing has been added to this distro and it's working on the tablet very well indeed. As previously, I've gone into accessibility and turned on the virtual keyboard, as you can see. And here, the default virtual keyboard is very nice indeed, much better than we've seen previously. It's got the control key that I always like to have. It's got cursor arrows, etc. Rather nice keyboard. But here in Linux Mint, we also have pre-installed a third-party virtual keyboard called Onboard, which I was planning on trying out in Manjaro and Ubuntu, but it's here by default in Linux Mint. And you can learn more about Onboard on its website over here, as you can see, like that. And if we turn on the onboard keyboard, there we are, as you can see, a very nice virtual keyboard. And this, I think, compares very well to what I have in Windows. There are various layouts for this keyboard. If we go into its uh, controls down here, as you can see, and go into its controls uh, there, there are different layouts available. So if we go up here to see uh, what they are. This is the, uh, the compact one. I quite like this one. But there's also a space efficient one like that which still has cursor arrows and things like that. We've also got a, a full keyboard if we go down here. That's uh, obviously good if you want everything at once. And there's also a phone type keyboard if you don't want quite as many symbols and things available. But uh, personally, I think that the, uh, the compact keyboard is a very good uh, keyboard to use on a tablet. And you can also set various themes here. If I go down to a theme like that, this is the default. I quite like Droid, which is very subtly different. But there's also things like typists, which give you a very wacky keyboard with all these colors on. Oh, look, I could customize the thing. So uh, I'm very impressed. I think we'll go back to a droid like that. This is a very nice virtual keyboard running here in Linux Mint. Oh, and as we haven't had a look, I'll just run up uh, LibreOffice and just show you once we start typing here with this keyboard, which obviously works fine. It does the proper scrolling thing. It's scrolling the top area of the screen, so things are working fine. And uh, when we turn off the keyboard uh, like that, we then see the whole screen. So this, I think, is a very good result. I'm very tempted to just install Linux Mint now on the tablet, but I'm first going to experiment with the onboard keyboard in Manjaro. So I've now installed Manjaro with a GNOME desktop on my test rig, so I can check out how it'll work with the onboard virtual keyboard before doing a more fundamental install on the tablet. And I've installed the onboard keyboard using the package manager, just searching for it and installing no problems at all. And as you might have noticed, I've pinned it to the dash. If I click down here, we have the onboard keyboard with a theme that kind of matches the desktop here in Manjaro. However, I have got two problems. The first one is I can't flick the keyboard up and down using the icon, the button on the dash, the way I could using the icon on the panel in Linux Mint. And more fundamentally, the keyboard is at the top of the screen. And you're thinking probably, Chris, we'll just put it at the bottom then. But uh, if I go into the uh, controls like this, we can go into Window and the Doctor Screen Edge. We can turn that on and off. That's not a problem. But when we go into Settings for Position, oh look, it's at the bottom already. And it uh, doesn't matter what I do here, it's always at the top of the screen. And given that my use of a tablet with an on-screen keyboard is mainly to write in Google Docs, I can't possibly have the keyboard above my document. 
So this is not a viable solution, and I have tried all kinds of layouts of the GNOME desktop. None of them stopped me having the keyboard only at the top. And so what I'm now going to do on the tablet is to install Linux Mint. So here I am back again, and everything is now working. So if I press the Windows icon beneath the screen on this tablet, to my great delight, we get the main Linux Mint menu. Here I can show you that the onboard on-screen keyboard is pre-installed in accessories. There it is down there. And once we've brought it up, we can bring it up and down using the icon on the panel. And as you can see, I'm trying out a rather wacky theme. So things now look very different to how we started out in Windows. Here in Linux, I'm also running Google Docs. Here it is. This works perfectly well. We can scroll it around with our fingers if we wish, and obviously type with the keyboard to add to it. And when we use the cursor arrows, you'll see that the screen scrolls correctly. Things don't disappear under the keyboard. So this, I think, is a very good result. And in fact, after installing Linux Mint, I managed to do all of my setup and configuration without attaching a keyboard. This said, I should note that right now I'm dual booting Linux and Windows on this device, which is not ideal as a Surface tablet does not allow operating system selection via a grub menu. So right now I can only access Linux using advanced startup options in Windows, which leaves me with an interesting configuration challenge for the future. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.